Hi, right, I'm Tom Moore from the Bartusa Lab, and in this short, sharp video, I'm going to talk about the O'Neill cover. You see a lot of trends in modern martial arts, in modern self-protection martial arts, that people tend to favour kind of guarded head covers. You've got Crazy Monkey, you've got Casey Methods, Defense Lab Methods, and so on. One of the earlier ones is what's known as the O'Neill cover. Um, so again, the prodigy of William Fairburn, um, Pat O'Neill, his particular patented cover will be to cross the arms in front of the face. Now, some people can get both elbows to align, other people just make their forearms parallel. But there's some important things. So, obviously, when you're covering, you must also be crashing. So there's no point me just waiting here and hoping that they punch themselves out on my forearms and my elbows. Humans are clever monkeys, they're gonna work their way around, pull you, rag you, hit you somewhere else. So when you are doing the O'Neill cover, the important thing is to remember that when it goes in, it crashes into that enemy if there's time. I drive my body weight using a drop step, bam, straight into that opponent. You know? And ideally with the O'Neill cover slash O'Neill crash, I've got one forearm in the track here, bam. I've got another forearm slash elbow, depending on where it hits, into the solar plexus region. So I've got a good striking position. So get used to being able to, when a strike's coming in, or you think a strike might be coming in, using the O'Neill crash. So use your Italian hands, talky, 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 move them up and down, however you want to do it. Bam, drop step in, tuck your fucking chin. Very important thing. A lot of people that do reality-based self-defense, many of them have a box, tuck your fucking chin. Tuck your chin down, shrug your shoulders up. Make your brain hard to shake. Make your brain hard to shake. Talky, talky, talky. Straight from here. Talky, talky, talky. Okay, so once you've got that O'Neill crash, which is quite good, it doesn't protect particularly well from attacks from behind, but from say 180 degrees, you're relatively sound. And if you're hunching your shoulders correctly, and if you're tucking your chin, you should be a pretty solid unit and be pretty safeguarded against brain shake regardless. So you've got the O'Neill cover. Now, what can you do from the O'Neill cover? Once you hit him, and you should treat this as a strike, two simultaneous strikes, you've got a couple of different options to play with. Obviously, you're tangled. If you're tangled, you want to untangle, okay? It's a very important thing. So one of the first things you can do from the O'Neill strike is simultaneous hammer fist or edge of hand blow. So again, you can burst and scissor this up. So I won't dive in because you won't be able to see it on camera, but imagine I've crashed here. So again, I'm driving into the trachea, into the arterial region, or along the jawbone. So again, from here, I've got one attacking the high line and one attacking the midline. So I've crashed, bang. And I can use, again, explosive energy to chop these in. And they can be edge of hand blows or hammer fists. I've covered, I've crashed in. And again, it's pretty nasty. It's very hard to defend two areas. So even if he has covered up top, he's getting a pretty solid shot into his spleen or into his solar plexus. If he manages to block down low, he's still getting a pretty hefty chop into his trachea, into his arteries, along his jawbone. So O'Neill cover into simultaneous strike. But again, it's about crashing over him like a wave. Bam, crash. And then obviously you continue fucking him up. So needless to say, the end of any sequence to talk about here, add in, fuck him up, until you need no, no longer need to, fuck him up. O'Neill cover and crash. Again, crash into it, be ballistic. You've got the double strikes here, which can be hammer fist, edge of hand, one edge of hand, one hammer fist, whatever you want to do, but they're coming out, they're untangling. Okay, then you've got cross lapel clinch. So imagine he's got a jacket on, I'm grabbing both sides of it here. So I've crashed, grab, I've grabbed, I've got a pretty strong grip of the fabric on either side, and now I can rag that bastard forwards or drive him back. So this kind of position here is really good for pulling people down. If you think a bit of ghetto judo here, I've got them in a cross collar. You know, I use my hikite, I pull, I pull it back to my hip, and I rag that fucker down. From here, or I run that fucker into the nearest wall. So I can push him and smash him into stuff, I can pull him down into stuff, I can pull him into a headbutt, I can pull him into a knee, I go from the O'Neill into a double attachment, I use some Kazushi, which means I rag the bastard, 
and drive him into a wall, drive him into me, or drive him into his mate over there. Doesn't really matter, but all that is enabled from that O'Neill cover. And bear in mind that those two things I've just talked about aren't mutually exclusive. So I can O'Neill crash, you can hit with something, and then attach, then rag the bastard. So again, these are options that you can play with. Another thing you can do from the O'Neill is you can do an eye rake. So once you hit from here, you unwind with that rake across the eyes. Now I prefer the more concussive, the more ballistic smash, or being able to grab, trip, throw, rag, or pull into a knee if I want to, nice and easy. But I can also unwind with a rake across the face. So again, I'm dragging the maximum number of fingers and appendages across that eye target to cause severe pain. It won't cause damage, damage I'll have to cause thereafter. Now, that causes damage, that causes pain. So O'Neill, crash, strike, and then I can tear across his face using almost an inverted tiger claw style motion. O'Neill cover, and you crash, you rip that off. And again, you could be grabbing a bit of hair, a bit of ear, you know, getting used to the motion of cover, grab or claw, and rip. And again, making sure you're twisting your hip and your core, cover, rip rip that bastard. So whether you're gripping and ripping, or you're just taking some eyes, boom, yeah, just really fucking take that across his face. Or if you grab a lump of hair, lump of ear, bit of hoodie, get used to that explosive rip. It's not just arm power, it's arm, hip, foot, boom, all from the O'Neill. So things to play with from the O'Neill and how it's a little bit different from other things out there on the market. Forearms parallel and crash as you would. Okay, making sure your chin is fucking tucked and your shoulders are up. You've got your double strikes, which can be edge of hand, can be hammer. You've got your rips and tears. So from here, grabbing a lump of face, raking it across the eye, grabbing a bit of ear, bit of hair, bit of hoodie, rip it. Or you've got a bit of ghetto judo. You're getting a cross grip across his hoodie, jacket, coat, or what have you, and pull sharply down or drive sharply forward. So sharply down, often that's with a nut or a knee. <laughs> or you smash him into the nearest wall, in which case you drive him, or you smash him into the nearest dude over here, in which case you rag him and deposit him that way. So those are some of the things you can do from the O'Neill cover, which make us an interesting addition to your arsenal of more traditional covers. Uh, give it a play.